Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Let's solve this one another problem from the friction topic. In this problem, we are given that the inverted track T, which with freely floating cylinder C, comprises a system which is designed to hold paper or thin materials P in place. The coefficient of static friction is mu for all the interfaces. What minimum value of the coefficient of static friction ensures that the device will work no matter how heavy the supported material P is, right? So here we have the supported material and here we have this uh, cylinder, right? And this P material is supported in this whole system, right? So now if I consider uh, this P material as a free body diagram, right? If I consider this as a free body diagram, so here the this surface will apply the normal force on this P material, right? So let's say, let's say that the normal force applied by this surface on this P material is let's say N A. And similarly, this cylinder will also apply the normal force on this P material in the opposite direction like this, right? So let's say this is N B. And the weight of this P material will be acting vertically downward like this. Right. And let's say that the weight of this P material is let's say WP, right? And if if the weight, if the external force is acting downwards, what will happen is that this P material will try to move in the downward direction, right? So there will be friction forces uh, here which will be acting vertically upward and let's say this is FA and here we will have the friction force as well, right? Which will be acting upwards as well, right? And let's say this is FB. So now this is our free body diagram, right? Let me isolate this P material, right? So this is the free body diagram of that material P. So if I consider material P, right? And and the problem it is said that this material P need to be in equilibrium, right? Right? Here it is said that which is designed to hold paper, right? So to hold paper means that the paper need to be at rest. So it means that it need to be in equilibrium, right? So we have so we have to apply the equilibrium conditions, right? This is that F A. So now if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So and if, if this is our positive x and y direction. So then N B is acting in the positive x direction. And, and A is acting in the negative x direction and this is equal to 0 or we can say that N B is equal to N A, right? So, and similarly if, if N B is equal to N A and um, then F A will be equal to mu N A since these are frictions and similarly F B will be equal to mu N B. So, this is FB, right? FB. So if NA is equal to NB, this means that FA is equal to FB. Since mu is constant, right? Mu remains the same for all the interfaces, right? So this means that FA and FB, both of these frictions are same, right? So now if I apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0, so this FA and FB are acting in the positive. Uh, y direction, so I can write F A plus F B. This is F B, remember, right? This is F B. So F A plus F B minus the weight of the material P, this will be equal to 0. Uh, and if F B is equal to F A, so we can write in place of F B, F A as well. So this will be equal to 2 F A equals to W P. And from this, we can write that F A is equal to W P divided by 2, which gives us 0.5 W P. This is equation 1, right? Now, if I, if I draw the free body diagram of that cylinder, right? So, here we will have that cylinder as a free body diagram, right? And the same N B friction will be acting on this cylinder in the opposite direction as a reaction force, right? So we will have this same N B force in this direction and this N B will pass through the center of this cylinder, right? And let's say the center of this cylinder is represented by O, right? And similarly, this surface will apply the normal force on this cylinder as well, right? 
uh, that normal force will be acting in this direction right and let me let me represent this surface as well right so we will have this surface here right like this and this normal force will be perpendicular to, to that surface right? like this and let's say that that this normal is let's say and b right and similarly if this fb uh, if this fb is acting in the upward direction on this wp so as a reaction what will happen is that this fb will be acting in the opposite direction right uh, between the two interfaces right so this fb will be acting in the opposite direction on this cylinder right that is what uh, vertically down right so we will have that same fb force right and similarly uh, here we will have that uh, fd friction which will be parallel to the surface right let's say this is our fd friction right this is f d and similarly the weight of uh, this cylinder will be acting vertically downward so let me represent that weight as well that weight will be acting vertically downward like this and let's say that the weight of the cylinder is let's say wc right so now if i apply if i consider the cylinder free body diagram so if i apply the summation of moment about the center of the cylinder that is equal to 0 right so as we can see that this nb this nd and this wc they are passing to that point o and let's assume that the radius of the cylinder is r let's say that this radius is r right so as we can see that this fd is producing the counter clockwise moment about this point o so i will write plus fd and the moment arm of this fd from that point o is the radius of the cylinder so i have to multiply it with r and similarly this fb is producing the clockwise moment so i will write minus fb and the moment arm of this fb is also the radius of the cylinder so i have to multiply it with r as well and this will be equal to 0 so if i divide this whole equation by r so that will give us fd equals to fb right and similarly fb is equal to fa so we can say that fa is equal to fb is equal to fp right and and all these are equal to since fa is equal to 0.5 wp so 0.5 wp right now similarly if i apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 right so then we have to resolve this nd into its components and this fd into its components right so this fd is making 30 degrees with the vertical right if i draw a vertical line here if i draw a vertical line here like this so this fd is making that same 30 degree angle since this surface is making 30 degree angle with the vertical right so this fd is making uh, this fd is making 30 degree angle here right so if we resolve this fd into its component so it will have two components it will have one component will be like this this one will be the cos component and this one will be the sine component remember right and similarly uh, this nd this nd is perpendicular with this surface and if i draw a horizontal line here so this horizontal line is perpendicular with this and this normal is perpendicular with this surface and the angle between these two surfaces is 30 so this means that that nd is making 30 degree angle with the horizontal right it will have two components it will have one component which will be acting in this direction let me represent it here right it will be acting in this direction this red one are the components of nd right and here we have that 30 degree angle so this red one is the cos component right and it will have one another component will be acting in this direction that is in the upward direction like this so if this is the cos component then this one is the sine component right so now if i apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 so is we can see that this this nd component this is the uh, sine component of nd right so i will write nd sine of 30 degrees it is acting in the positive y direction right so i have to write plus right and this cos component of f 
d is acting in the negative y direction so I will write minus f d cos of 30 degrees. Similarly, this w c is acting in the negative uh, y direction so I have to write minus w c and this f b is acting in the negative y direction so I have to write minus f b equals to 0. Or let me write minus f b here minus f b minus w c and this will be equal to 0 right. So, now from this f d f b they are equal right. So, we can write that n d sin of 30 degrees f d is equal to 0 0.5 w p cos of 30 degrees again f b is also 0.5 w p and minus w c and this is equal to 0. So, now let us simplify this sin of 30 sin of 30 is 0 0.5 so we can write that this is 0 0.5 n d and if if I take w p common minus w p if I take minus w p common so we will have 0 0.5 cos of 30 plus 0 0.5 minus w c and this will be equal to 0. So, now we can simplify this right. So, 0 0.5 cos of 30 plus 0 0.5. So, this gives me 0 0.933 right. So, we can write 0 0.5 and d minus 0 0.933 w p minus w c and this will be equal to 0 and if you bring these two terms to the other side so they will become positive and if I divide this whole equation by 0 0.5 so we will get n d in terms of that w p and w c right. So, I have to divide both of the coefficients by 0 0.5 right. So, 0 0.933 divided by 0 0.5 so, this is 1.866 w p and plus 1 divided by 0 0.5. So, this is 2 w c. Now, let us say this is equation 2 let us say. Now, if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 for the cylinder right. So, the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So, now as we can see that uh, this red component is the cos component of this N D and it is acting in the positive x direction right. So, I will write plus N D cos of 30 degrees and this black one is the component of this F D and this F D is making 30 degree with the vertical. So, this is the cos component and this is the sine component. So, I will write plus F D sine of 30 degrees right and similarly this n b is acting in the negative x direction. So, I will write minus n b and this is equal to 0 and if I bring this to the other side of equation. So, we can write that n b is equal to the summation of both of these right. So, I can write that n b equals to n d and first let me find cos of 30 right. So, cos of 30 is 0 0.866 right. So, I can write that this this is 0 0.866 and d plus f d and again f d is 0 0.5 w p. So, 0 0.5 w p into sin of 30 and sin of 30 is 0 0.5 right. So, 0 0.5 first let me write that f d is 0 0.5 w p sin of 30 and if I further multiply 0 0.5 with sin of 30. So, this is 0 0.5 multiplied by sin of 30. So, this will become 0 0.25 right. So, 0 0.25 w p. So, I will write that this whole term when f d is equal to this thing. So, this will be equal to 0 0.25 w p right. And now from equation 2 we can substitute this n d in this equation right. So, this will be n b and this will be 0 
eight six six and now N D from this equation. So N D is one point eight six six W P plus two W C plus zero point two five W P and we have to multiply this point eight six six inside, right? So zero point eight six six into one point eight six six this is one point six one six W P. 1.616 WP and then let me write this 0.25 WP here so this is 0.25 WP and now I have to multiply 0 0.866 with 2 right so 0 0.866 multiplied by 2 gives us 1.732 WC so plus 1.732 WC and if I take WP common so we can add both of the coefficients right so this will be 1.616 plus 0 0.25 and this gives again 1.866 WP 1.866 WP plus 1.732 WC so this is NB let's say this is equation 3 right now let's compare NB with ND, right? Let me write that ND equation, right? This equation. So this is 1.866 WP plus 2 WC. Now this term and this term they are equal, and this WC in the case of NB WC is multiplied with 1.732, and in case of ND WC is multiplied by 2. So this means that 2 WC this product is larger than this product right so if we add this 2 WC with the same constant this uh, same 1.866 WP so from both of these the comparison of both of these we can say that ND is greater than NB right so from this we can conclude that uh, the friction at these interface The, the NB is less than ND so this means that uh, here between these two surfaces the friction need to be maximum right and the friction here between these two surfaces is FB right since it is the weakest link right so from this we can conclude that FB need to be maximum right let me write that need to be maximum or in other words we can say that FB is to be maximized right so we can say that FB should be equal to mu and B right and since in the problem statement we are required to find the minimum value of mu right so for the whole system the in order to hold this WP of any mass we need to have the friction the maximum friction between these two interfaces and that uh, maximization equation will give us that minimum mu, va mu value right so whatever this equation gives us the mu value that will be the minimum limit for the coefficient of static friction right for all the interfaces right and from that particular value we can have the coefficient of stative friction greater than that value but we cannot have the lesser coefficient of stative friction than that value right so if i find mu from this equation then mu will be equal to that is fb divided by nb right and we know that fb is 0.5 wp here right so fb is 0.5 wp i will write 0.5 wp divided by NB this is an uh, this is NB this one is NB right so we can write that this is 1.866 WP plus 1.732 WC right now again in the problem statement it is said that what minimum value of mu ensures that the device will work no matter how heavy the supported material P is right so now from this if we say that WP is much much heavier than the cylinder right so if WP is much much greater than WC right 
so we need to require we need to design the whole system for this condition right that wp need to be much much greater than wc right so now if 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 wp is much much greater than wc so then we can neglect this term right we can neglect this term right and then we can say that mu that minimum coefficient of static friction for this system will be equal to 0.5 wp divided by 1.866 wp and wp will cancel out so we will be left with 0.5 divided by 1.866 and we can find that mu now that is 0.5 divided by 1.866 right so this is 0.268 right so mu equals to 0.268 right so this is the minimum coefficient of static friction for all the interfaces right the mu value could be greater than this 0.268 value but that for for designing such system the mu value cannot be lesser than 0.268 right so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope you people would have understood the solution of this particular problem please do like my videos if you people think that uh, they are helping you in your learning